this Ravelry Tips video, I'm going to once again take you inside my computer and inside my Ravelry account to help you find the answers you need to get the most out of Ravelry. And in this, in this video, I'm going to show you how to get help on a pattern. And I'm, I'm going to set up two scenarios, the first one being that uh, you're knitting through a pattern and you have a question on the pattern, and the second one being that you want to modify a pattern and you want to see if you can get some answers on modifying a pattern. So in the first situation, you're knitting through a pattern as written and you've come to a point where you're stuck. Either the pattern doesn't make sense or you don't understand the next little bit of instruction and you need help. You've tried to work through it yourself and you can't do it. So your first course of action is to see if there is some errata written on the pattern, if the designer has actually made corrections and posted those somewhere. So the first place you'll want to look is on the designer's website. So go to the, to the designer's website and drill down through their content to find the pattern you're knitting and to find the blog post on that pattern. And if there are corrections made, that is probably the first place that you're going to see corrections for that. You might also see it on the Ravelry page, but there's kind of more room on a person's website and that's a good place to start. If there is no errata written for that pattern, your next course of action is probably to contact the pattern designer. And if they give a contact form on their website or they actually give you an email in an email address in the pattern, that's a good way to go. But I actually find that contacting people through Ravelry message is a better way to get an answer. You're more likely, in my experience, to get a response from people if you uh, message them through Ravelry, me Ravelry message. And the way to do that is to go to their Ravelry profile page, and up in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see the word send message, and you just, and we've done it before in other Ravelry tips videos. You just send them the message and ask them the question there. Now, there is another way. If you don't get a reply from the designer, there's one other Two other ways, really. Um, one other way on Ravelry to see if you can get an answer to your pattern question. So let's go ahead and take a look. So I'm here on my project page, and the first thing I'm going to do is uh, to get an answer is I'm going to go up here to the forums tab. And there are about 8 million forums on Ravelry for every subject you can possibly think of. And what I'm going to do, okay, not 8 million, I just made that number up, but it's a lot of forums on here. I'm going to type in the name of the pattern that I have a question on and type search. And magically, Ravelry is going to, uh, this didn't work, hold on. Oh, yes, it probably did. Ra uh, Ravelry is going to pull up every time Shaker Dishcloths is mentioned in every single forum post. The internet is awesome. So um, if I, I can scroll through these, the entire post is actually here with each one of the, um, the headers there. And I can see if the question I have on the pattern is asked. Because if I'm stuck on something, it's, there's a very good chance that someone else has gotten stuck on something too. So we'll pretend that this first post here is actually my question. And she says, hi, I'm on the last row of the first color and I'm getting a lot of gaps in between my stitches. Should I be knitting in the back to twist them? Now let's just pretend that that's my question too. I'm going to click on the header for this post. And if I look here, I see that she has one reply. So someone's actually gotten back to her with this question. And look, it's me. I got back to her with an answer. <laughs> I said, no need. Um, they will all close up in the last row of the segment. So if this was my question, I could click through and actually see uh, that there's an answer here to this same question. And I've just worked it out for myself and how, um, how to get an answer to my question. Now the last, and hopefully you won't make it this far, the last way to get help on a pattern if you have tried contacting the designer and tried to find answers in Ravelry forms and you still are not having luck, the last thing you can do is um, to schedule a private lesson at your local yarn shop. There should be a knitting teacher there who will take private lessons. And really just save up all your questions and fill an hour's time and um, take that private lesson and get them all answered. Hopefully. Uh, the designer would get back to you with your quest with an answer to your question, but if they don't, that's your last 
your last resort. I know that I, um, I take private lessons and usually people just bring a giant tote bag with all the projects they've had to pause because they, <laughs> they've been saving them up for their hours time with me to, for me to help them through it. Okay, now the next scenario for getting help on a pattern is um, if you want to modify a pattern. Um, and the last scenario that I showed you how to contact the pattern designer doesn't really apply in this case. Uh, I can't speak for all designers, but while I'm ready and able to answer any questions that you have on my patterns, um, I can't really help with pattern modifications. If I did, that would be all I did all day. Because it seems, a lot of the questions seem like simple questions like, I want to knit this in bulkier yarn, or how do I make this women's sweater into a baby sweater? What's the cast on number? But really, it requires that an entirely new pattern be written to accommodate the new gauge or the new size or whatever. So asking the designer is probably not the way to go. You probably won't get the answer you're looking for. But the good news is, if you're considering a modification to a pattern, there's a very good chance that someone else has thought of it as well, and they've already knitted up and if they've taken notes on what they've done, you can cheat off their paper and just do what they've done and not have to figure anything out for yourself. So in this scenario, I'm gonna use the same pattern that I used, um, the shaker dishcloth pattern, but I want to make placemats out of it. And I don't know how much yarn I need to make placemats out of it. I, uh, in the pattern, I actually give instructions for making them any size, but I can't really list out the yarn amount for any size. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what we get. I already know what we're gonna get. <laughs> I'm gonna click on patterns in the, um, the tabs at the top and I'm going to search for shaker dishcloths. And here's the pattern that I want. If I click through to that, I wanna go over here to the right panel where I see 111 projects. And this is what I want to do. I wanna scroll through and see if anyone else knit coasters. Look what nice pictures people take. I'm going to see if anyone else knit coasters and then see if they, um, if they left notes on the amount of yarn that they used. So I'm scrolling through these beautiful photos looking for coasters. I already know what I'm going to find. Because look at here, this person took great photos of their coasters and it happens to be my friend Stephen. I'm going to click through. And Stephen's done an outstanding job here. He um, has listed the exact amount of every single color he used for his placemats and coasters. So he used Knit Picks Comfrey Worsted that I see right here, and which is the yarn that I use in the pattern. And for he used four skeins of ivory, because ivory appears in each one of them. If I keep scrolling down, he used one skein of the blue-green merina keep scrolling down, one skein of the blackberry. I don't have to guess anymore how much yarn I'm going to need because Stephen here has already figured all of it out. And he took notes. Let's scroll all the way down to his notes down here. Um, he says in this last paragraph, the yarn amounts above made six placemats and six coasters in each color. The placemats ended up being 11.5 inches in diameter, give or take a quarter inch. That is perfect information. That is exactly what I need, the size and the amount of yarn that he used. And I even like the colors. That would save me a lot of guesswork when I'm ordering the yarn. I'll know that I have exactly what I need. And this doesn't just apply to yarn amounts, of course. If you're looking to uh, modify any pattern, you know, for instance, you want to make sleeves longer on a sweater and you want to know how someone handled the decreases down the sleeve and the, the extra yarn that they used, or you want to turn a twin size uh, blanket into a king size bedspread, you can always find out what the cast on number ended up being or the amount of yarn. It's always good to check because there's a very good chance with all of us millions of knitters out there that someone has thought of the same modification. And if they're a part of the Ravelry community and they've added the information on what they've learned, that's a huge help for the rest of us. Anyway, I hope this video helps you get help on, uh, helps you find the help you need if you're having problems with a pattern. That ended up being a long sentence. Good luck.